Hey everybody, so this is Stormworks, and I cruised around the Steam Workshop earlier and looked for some planes, and I didn't really find very many. I found a lot of copies, and I found a lot of people who were, you know, making model planes, but there aren't really very many planes by ordinary players. And I think that's because it feels like planes are quite a challenge. They're not. I'm going to go ahead and teach you the tricks you need in order to build jet planes, or planes of any sort, in this game. Uh, it's much simpler than everybody says it is. It's much simpler than you think it is, because it's all about, like, one or two tricks that you need to know. And after that, it's, it's just super basic. So we're going to build a real big plane, just to show you how easy it is to build this stuff. There we go. This is going to be our main chamber that we can walk around in. So we're going to make it seven units of airspace because that is how tall you are. There we go. And now we'll be able to walk around inside of it. And that means that this is a large plane. It's like a passenger liner. It's, it's you know, all sorts of big, which is a fine way to show off how to do this because it just shows you how simple it is. You do not have to do things well. You only have to do a couple of things um, and everything else will just work out. We're going to be building a jet plane because jets are easier. They are substantially easier. And uh, it's actually a little hard to believe that if you've played around with jets and had problems, but it is true. There's only a couple of things you have to know. We're going to build some fuel tanks. Um, in general, you're going to want to control your center of mass a little bit, because if the engines are too far below your center of mass, then your nose will go up, and if they're too far above your center of mass, then your nose will go down. <laughs> right now what we're doing is building fuel tanks. Now fuel tanks are a major reason why your center of mass would shift. So when you're building your fuel tanks, uh, put them somewhere around where you expect your center of mass to be, or where you expect your jet thrust to be. That way, as your fuel tanks empty out, your center of mass won't radically shift. So if you're wondering exactly what kind of fuel tanks to build, it doesn't matter. You can even use these. Just make sure to understand that if you are building custom fuel tanks like this, the fluid spawners, these guys, uh, that you put in, take a look at the center of mass over there, see if it shifts even in the slightest. No. It does not actually register that these are full of fluid. So when you're putting together custom fuel tanks, keep in mind that they do not change your center of mass in this display, but they sure as heck change your center of mass when you're trying to fly. The, uh, the other thing we're going to need is control surfaces. Now control surfaces are the number one thing that people get wrong. And the reason for that is simply because um, it, it, it's unclear the kinds of control surfaces you're actually going to need and that sort of stuff. But in the end, control surfaces are the number one thing that keep your plane flying. Wings, you don't need them. All you need are control surfaces and, and a jet. So we're going to go ahead and use these small control surfaces. If you're doing a smaller plane, you can use fin rotors. It doesn't matter how big they are. It only matters that they're in the right place and pointing the right way, which is to say negative is up. These are our tail controls. They control our manual pitch adjust and our left right. Um, we're also going to want to install a lot more control surfaces. So we've got our pitch and we've got our yaw and we need our roll, right? That's it. Those are the three. Uh -uh. That, that is where people go wrong because you actually need like seven or eight control surfaces in order to make it easy. And this is true regardless of the size of plane you're going to be building. There are no um, built-in control helpers in this game to help you fly your plane. So you're going to want your plane to have control helpers, and the easiest way to do that is to know what you're going to need ahead of time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in air brakes. Uh, and for air brakes, I just want to have it so that the plus is pointed away from, it, from each other. That way, um, when I send a plus to them, they will help brake. So these two will spread out and do a hard break whenever we need them to. And that's going to be a big help when we are trying to land. Uh, after that, we are, going to, we, we are going to need another set of pitch controls. Now, pitch controls are better when they're further back. This is substantially behind the center of mass, so this won't be a bad place to put them. But here's the thing. Uh, it's still going to be a little bit poor. Well, that's OK. We'll go ahead and put them in anyway. This should work. And minus is up. 
What other controls are we going to need? Well, we're going to need two sets of roll controls. Now, pitch controls are all about being forward and back from the center of mass. But roll controls are all about being away from the center of mass horizontally. So this is going to be our automated roll control to keep our plane even when we're not paying attention. And this is going to be our personal roll control to help us guide the plane when we want to. Uh, and we can also do a lot of other things with these if we'd like. Now, it's possible for you to create complicated setups where you add controls together. But if you do that, then you're going to run into maximums where you, you're telling it to go at 1 and the AI is telling it to go at 0.3 and, you know, it, all, it gets confused. So it's generally better if the AI and you have your own sets of controls. And I keep saying AI. It's actually just a sensor. So there's not really any complicated stuff going on here. Now we want to turn these into wings. Now, I'm going to be honest here, I have never felt that wings made even a hint of difference. Um, the only thing they seem to do is keep you stable uh, a little bit. They don't seem to provide any lift or anything. But they are a fast and easy way to make your, your planes look decent, I guess. Uh, keep in mind that these large wings don't actually line up properly. Isn't that fantastic? But they are precisely the same width as a small control. So if you are trying to get them to fit, you can always just slap down something on the edge of the small control and then drop in your wing. Come on. There we are. Oh, no. How annoying. There we are. And we'll put in two of those. And then for the third one, we'll just decay it away. Um, we'll use some small wings, maybe, or some... There we are. And these are just decorations, as far as I'm concerned, because I haven't ever seen them actually provide any significant amount of lift or anything. So I just do whatever I would like with them. Um, you do not have to build a realistic plane. Because the lift matters so little, you can build whatever you'd like. Who cares? Uh, and it'll work fine as long as you've got the right control surfaces and the right jets. Now it's time for the right jets. So the only thing that really matters when we're building jets is that we don't want to blow off any of our wing. We'd like the jets to be roughly center of mass if possible, but it, since th that's only because the lift is so poor. Uh, if you actually find that you are getting lift, maybe there's been a patch or something, you're going to have to take that into account and move the jet engines, but, you know, whatever. We're just going to go ahead and put them on the bottom of these wings, because that's the easiest way to do it. If you've ever played with jet engines, uh, you know, looked up tutorials on them, then you probably already know how to assemble them, but let's go over it real quick. There's an air intake, and then there is a compressor, which allows you to ignite the jet engine when you're at a standstill. Then there is the combustion chamber, which is what actually burns all of the jet fuel. So you're going to want that to point at, there we are. Make sure the arrows are going the right way and make sure that fluid is pointed over at your uh, actual uh, tank of fuel. And then there's a the combustion chamber. We're going to use this medium one because the medium one has an output port, which can be extremely handy for doing all sorts of cool advanced stuff. And then we're going to slap on a jet exhaust. And you may have noticed that that might burn off our um, our flap. Well, I've never seen that happen, so I don't really care. <laughs> uh, you can obviously beautify this in a lot of ways. We're not going to bother. We're just going to go ahead and set it up in the fastest way possible. So right now, I'm just attaching the fuel tank to our jet engines, and there we have it. It's all set up and ready to roll. The only thing miss missing now uh, is a lot of software and some wheels. Well, let's put on the wheels first and add the software second. So with the wheels, for something this size, I'm just going to slap on some large landing wheels. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff with wheels, like using hinges um, and you know making it so you can correctly dolly out onto the or taxi out onto the field and stuff. But for our purposes, the only thing that matters is that the rear wheels need to be one or two tiles lower than the front wheels because that helps us get off the ground. Now what we need is batteries. Everybody always needs batteries. So we're just going to drop them in here. It doesn't really matter where they are. Um, you can obviously be a lot more careful about how you do this and set this up in a lot of different ways. Oh, and we're going to want to add in one control, a, a, a lever, a throttle lever. These throttle levers are going to be how we control the throttle of the jet engine. 
Um, and you might think, no, no, I want to control it much more, you know, personally. You don't, trust me on this. So I just put that in now because we're going to hook all the electronics together and I didn't want to miss that, right? So we'll just go ahead and start to do this stuff. And we're just going to go ahead and do it nice and fast and dirty. This is not how I recommend you do it if you are planning to ever break anything. <laughs> because that's really the only thing that matters, um, the electrical systems, because when you break something, they stop working. So now all we have to do is make it run. So to make it run, we're going to connect the one button to the ignition. And then we're going to connect the throttle to the throttle. And then we're going to connect up and down, or W and S, um, to our tail. Oh, I missed. I'll try that again. And then this can be A and D. Hmm. Boop. So it takes quite a while to ignite these. And our, yep, there we are. Now that we've ignited them, turn off the igniter. We don't need to keep wasting batteries. There we are. We're now in the sky. Not going to last long, though. Yep, there it is. The dreaded flame out. Uh, and this is, I think, the number one reason people worry about jet engines. They're like, ah, jet engines always burn out. Do I need some kind of advanced mathematics to make them not suck? No, no. You got a very, very simple secret here. You're going to use something called a PID, and yeah, it's scary, right? Well, it's actually not that scary in this case because there's a setting that always works. <laughs> you just have to know what it is. And in our case, the setting is going to be 0 0.100. 0. That's the setting you need for the PID. The next thing we're going to need to do is change this throttle to have a maximum of 180. And we'll call that throttle. And we'll just make that go over into the PID here. Uh, and that's the current, no, that's the wrong one, sorry, it's this one, the set point. That's how many RPS we want to set the engines to. And then how many RPS is currently set to, well, we'll just ask the engine. And then the actual throttle, that's going to go out to the throttle. And the only other thing we have to do is tell it that it's on, because if there's one thing the devs of this game are great at, it's always choosing the wrong defaults. And... Notice that I'm raising my tail fins to help me get off the ground. Basic stuff. Now there should be a burp. There we are. And now we're fine. You can adjust it so that burp doesn't happen. I don't really care that much. We are now running at 180 RPS, and we will run at 180 RPS until I tell it to run at less. Like 881. Now the only problem with this is that if you bring it down like that, there is a risk that you will end up... Um, actually losing your jet engines, like they'll just turn off and you have to reignite them. I've never seen that happen, but they do turn off, which can be a little bit concerning, but for a very, very basic setup, this is just easy. It's something you just do not have to worry about. There are a lot of other optimizations you can do, but leave that to people who really care. For you, all you have to do is remember that the setup for the PID is 0.100. 0 0.100. 0. That's all that's all you need. And then you can set the number of RPS you'd like directly with your throttle. It's that simple. Now let's set up the rest of the control so that we can actually fly the plane, shall we? So one of the things we're going to need to do is allow ourselves to roll. And that means flipping up one side and flipping down the other. And for that, the easiest thing to do is to give us an inverter. We could install each side upside down separately if we really wanted to, but inverters are pretty basic. There's not any reason to avoid them. So we're just going to pop off to the front of the plane here and put some inverters in behind these seats, like so. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our, um, we can take our left right and make that our roll. So 
the inverter is going to go to one of these and the uninverted value is going to go to the other. And I can never remember which way it is. So we're just going to say that that one's the inverted one and then this one is the uninverted one. And then we'll test it and we'll flip it if we're wrong. So that's me trying to turn right, and that is in fact turning left. So we'll invert it again. I'm also gonna move this so that it's not so far away. Somehow I managed to get this wrong literally every single time. There's something about it that, um, is this the right one? No, that's, that's not the right one, it's that one. There we are, and now we should actually be able to fly the plane. Now, personally, I'm using WS for up and down. You can use up and down for up and down. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. There's our burp, and then we can just spin. Woohoo! And yaw! And do loop de loops. And you can see just how easy it is to control this plane and have it do whatever I need it to do. The only problem is it's not going to really even out. It's perfectly happy to fly sideways. That's when we bring our AIs into play. Now, it might be possible to build the jet engine, uh, the jet chassis to correct itself without any sort of assistance. Um, but I'm not really sure how. And it seems like that would be a lot of effort. So we're just going to have it brute forced. And by brute forcing, I mean we're going to install two sensors. Uh, tilt meters, to be honest. We're going to need one facing forward. Uh, doop. And one facing to the side. And this one will determine our tilt, and this one will determine our roll, even though that's backwards. But I can't do anything about that. Um, so in order for those to actually influence us, we're going to need to multiply them, because their values are quite small by default. So there are a lot of ways to do that. You can use a multiply. The built-in multiply works fine. I use this inherent multiply because it's a little smaller. It's just a, a, a little toy I built that multiplies by a value of my choice. Um, so we'll just install two of those. And then we'll connect these sensors to them. And I can just tell it what to multiply by here. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to 20 so that we can see whether or not we're pointed in the correct direction. Now, for the tilt meter, which is this one, we can just connect those directly to the tilt control system we set up, which is this set. For the other one, we'll have to put one of them into one side of the wings, like so. The other one goes into the inverter, because we put in two inverters, and there's a reason. That's uh, one inverter. Did I not put in two inverters? I could have sworn that... No, I, I, I grabbed an inverter. Okay, sorry. I clicked off of the wrong thing there and ended up confusing myself. Um, the inverter goes over there, and the multiple goes here, and the multiple goes over here. Uh, I misclicked, and I ended up confusing myself. All right, so... Now what we can do is we can take a look and see whether or not they're pointed the right way. And that's actually pretty easy. We just have to make sure to do some tilting and some uh, rolling. Now this is me controlling the tail. And then you can see how it's bringing down our nose. So it's pointed correctly, but the spin is backwards. So let's fix the spin. Just go back out here and uh, change the spin to negative instead of positive. And I believe that this one back here is the spin. Doop. It was attempting to roll us out of the sky. I don't know if you picked up on that. So now it's trying to bring down our nose, but it's not doing it very effectively. And that might just be because of the fact that those aren't very far back. Um, so it's, it's not very easy for it to uh, really get much purchase. 
So what we might want to do is uh, give that a little bit of help. But you can see how it's working. It's, it's trying, but our nose is tending towards up, which is something we'll have to fix. For now, we can fix it just by adding in a little bit of trim. The other thing we're going to want to do is test the rolling. So let's roll. And you can see how it's counter rolling, and that's exactly what we want to see. Now we could combine those into one set of uh, fins, but this is just easier to hook up and has fewer failure states. And as of now, we have a fully functional jet. It's that easy. We can now do everything we need. The only thing left for us to do is to set up our landing capabilities. So for that, what we're going to want to do is uh, have these air brakes as something we can turn on. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, we're just going to make ourselves a number switch. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, I'm going to use my built-in number switch. Uh, you can go ahead and, uh, not that one, um, that one. You can go ahead and use whatever you'd like. There are a lot of uh, simple uh, objects that are set up, pre, you know, prefabs set up for you to be able to do this sort of thing. But for my sake, all I really want is the ability to send a one when I want to send a one. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to set that up on six. And then for that, we're going to send a one to our air brakes and to our differential brakes on the rear wheels. And then we can, you know, select this and be like, brakes, air. Now, landing is not my forte in any game, and it's dark and rainy, so I can't say that this will succeed, but we'll give it a shot. See? Whoop. Oh. Let off a little bit early there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly take off, and then we're going to bank around. Now, as I said, what we could do if we really wanted to control this, we could move the fins back, we could put on some advanced uh, fins, we could do a lot of things to give it better controls. First thing we're going to want to do is bring this way down, though, to like 42, maybe? Something like that. I guess we'll land in the ocean, because I can't see anything. I don't have an altimeter in this plane, so I really have no idea how high off the ground we are. Uh, I see water, and it's night. This is a great demo, don't you think? There's an island in the way. Oh, wow, it's actually a big island. Well, whatever, we'll land here. So deploy the brakes and cut the throttle. And you can see how rapidly we just nosedive out of the sky. Uh, that didn't work too well because I was too aggressive with it. I should have waited until we were on the ground. But wah! if we hadn't landed in the water, our engines wouldn't have exploded. And the wheels are tougher than you might give them credit for when they're these large wheels. So that is how you can build a jet, large or small. Uh, okay, large or small, these things are remarkably easy to put together. The only tricks that you have to remember are that you want that PID with the .100 to make your engines not explode, and that you want these control surfaces, these specific control surfaces, to help you get your plane under control. Um, I used a couple of condensed logic circuits that I made myself, but you can use the ones built into the game. All of the logic in this is either multiplying one number by another or sending a number if a value is true. And those are very, very easy. This works for all jets of all sizes. There's no real concerns. Um, hopefully someone who watches this has strong opinions on how jets should be made and is like, oh, you know, lift actually works like this and you can optimize it like this. So check out the comments and see if anybody said anything like that because I have never seen hide nor hair of any of that. To me, this is all that matters. Just control surfaces. Have a good one.